QML tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, this is going to be part one of probably a couple to try and explain how everything kind of gets tied together. Um, what I mean by that is, is up till now, we've only been setting contextual properties, um, meaning that these are strings and things that, you know, we can only use as properties. Um, yeah, so to explain that even better, let's take a look at our main.qml. We learned this in our, uh, we learned a lot about this in our QML tutorials, but we have an element here, right? And inside of our element, we have properties, right? Like contextual properties, just like our movies path is now a contextual property. Text is a, is a property, right? Um, and in order to get a property, uh, there needs to be a couple things, right? So in our last tutorial, we made a, a file called new file, uh, .txt. And, uh, you know, we haven't really done anything with it. And we included the, uh, Q file inside of here, right? So let's take a look at how we can do things a little bit differently. Um, and this is a this is a really fun thing to do, and I enjoy doing this a lot. Uh, this is one of my favorite things to do with Qt. Uh, and in fact, I've made a bunch of different libraries out there, and they're all uh, under the limited GNU public license. So you're more than welcome to use them, fork them, do whatever the heck you want with them. Uh, and a lot of these tutorials will be pointing actually over to that GitHub uh, section and uh, you'll be able to use anything there. But without further delay, let's let's take a look at QFile again. Um, so let's just uh, include QFile here. Um, and I'm just doing this so I can get to the help page faster. I guess it would have been faster for me to type it all out. Anyways, so again, reading and writing to files, and we have this, we have this example right here, right? So let's copy this example. Let's uh, close that and let's just get rid of including Q file, right? Now, again, back over to the main.qml. We have an element. We have properties of the element, right? Some of these properties are inherent of Q object or the item, which items are inherent of Q object, right? Like ID, width, height, uh, anchors. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's inherent. We can actually scroll over and, uh, you know, then list all in, in, in inherent members um, that are inherent with it. Uh, so anyways, uh, and, and you can see some of these are the following members are inherited from item, which item itself is inherited from Qt object. Uh, anyways, complicated, not really, maybe. So we have, a, we have an element and we have properties underneath the element, right? Okay. Let's go back over to our main.cpp over here and let's add a new class, right? So we click on files and classes, CPP or C++, C++ classes. Let's press choose, right? And we're going to name this uh, file reader, right? And our, uh, our type information is going to be inherent of uh, Q object, of course, because we are inherent doing that and well we talked about that in our first one so let's go ahead and press next and finish right so this presents us with two new files and if we look at our uh, our profile right here you can see that the header has been set right here and the source is also there too so it knows to build it um, automatically gets added by uh, qt creator we also have this new file uh, or yeah new file.txt that we've used before so in our file reader right here, we have it, it, we see that it's inherent of Q object, right? The parent and so on and so forth. If we actually look at the file reader uh, header file, let's go into that first. We can see that the macro is there to include the Q object. Well, since we're going to be dealing with files, we're going to need to include. Let's see here, Q file, probably Q Q text stream. Do, 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 do. There it is. And let's bring in QDebug. Whoops. And let's bring in QStringList. Probably don't need it because we've got the core, but QString, which I think is it inherently brings in QStringList. I don't know. I just always do this. Uh, Anyways, so um, back over to our main.cpp, or I'm sorry, our main.qml over here. We have a property, or I'm sorry, we have an element, 
and then we have properties underneath them, right? So let's take a look at this text right here, right? This text needs to get set, right? Right? It needs to get these things and then set itself, right? So that it is movies belong here at new space and then architectural property of movie path, right? Um, so if we actually go back over to the file reader.h, we can start to kind of put this all, get the help thing out of the way. We can start to kind of put all of this together. Number one, we're not going to need public slots, but we are going to need a couple things that are private. Okay, so we are going to need getters. and setters, right? Spelled right, awesome. So this is where things um, get real fun here. Um, so we need to get some properties. We need to set some properties. We need to do a bunch of things, right? We have some signals, so on and so forth, right? So let's take a look at that code again for Q file uh, for reading that file, which was Right about here, we'll use this one right here. So we have this uh, code right here that we know works because it's from our, our uh, it's from our examples and in, in the help and so on and so forth. So we have this Q file, right, which is assigned a variable called file, which has a value that gets passed into it, right. So there is our setter, right. There is our setter, right? It, there's something we're going to need to pass into our function when we write it, right? And then it says if it's not open, so on and so forth, do this, do this, do that. Um, that will all be uh, done also too. So let's take a look at some of the things also that are there besides just getters. We have getters. We have setters. Okay. Then we have signals. Then we have slots. Signals and slots are not going to be covered in this one, um, but I will give you a really simple example really fast, right? Like a signal, okay, would be if we are on our main uh, thing here and we said on text changed, right? That's a signal that says, okay, signal. Uh, if this text changes, signal text changed, right? So that's that. That's, that's what a signal is, kind of. Um, you can also use them to connect to slots and that's just way too far out of the scope of this, right? So we need to be able to get things, right? And we need to be able to set things. Well, we know that we're going to be able to, that we need to get a file name. Um, that's pretty uh, important. Um, so we, we need to be able to make the getter for that. So for that, that's a Q string, right? And that's just going to be simply called, uh, I don't know, file name. And there we go. We now have a function called file name, a getter, right? And what this will do is eventually this will be getting it from QML, right? Now we need to set that, right? So we say void uh, and we'll say set file name. And then we'll pass in a constant Q string and we'll the file name. So now we have our setter, right? And our signals would go down in here, right? Uh, and then we have a private, right? So we need to be able to uh, set this by a private by a private string, right? So we'll say Q string. And I know it's kind of hard to understand at this point, but you, you will see here in a second, file name, right? So we just assigned a variable uh, called M file name, which is, which is private and uh, whatever. Okay, wonderful, right? So we have, this one first. So let's 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 implement this into our CPP, right? So let's go down here to refactor and then add a definition underneath file reader.cpp. Okay, that's wonderful. Now let's go back over to our file reader header file and let's do the same for our set file name refactor and add definition underneath there. Okay, wonderful. So we have these two functions now that are sitting underneath here and our first one is going to be return M file name. The second one is going, we're going to set it. We're going to say M underscore file name is equal to 
what we're bringing into it right here, the file name, right? Simple as that. So there we go, we have that. Now, if we go back, uh, we have our getters and our setters, okay? Um, now, if we go back over to our header uh, file here, we can look at something called the queue property, right? So we can do queue underscore property, right? Now, how this works is, is we need a type and it's a queue string. We know that. Uh, the name is going to be file name, right? It's going to read from file name. It's going to write to file name and then notify. We will, we will definitely get back to that in a second. But for right now, we're concentrating on getters and setters, right? So we have a queue property, right? With the queue string, okay, of file name, right? So if we look back over at our main.qml, that would be queue, uh, it would be queue uh, property, and it would be a queue string with the name of text, right? Cool. So I hope we understand that we understand all of this. Again, recapping here, we need a getter to be able to set something from QML, which is going to be reading in the file name, right? Then we need to write, right, to our set file name, which is our setter, right? So we get it and we set it. Then the property has been set, right? Then we have a M file name, a private string underneath here called M file name, which is used in our implementations of our set file name. We can see m file name is equal to file name, and then file name is just returning the m file name. Okay, so that is getters and setters so far. In the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at a couple other things, uh, signals and uh, methods and some other quick things. Um, but for right now, just concentrate on this, and then we'll be putting this all together so that at the end of the day, we'll have our own element. Right, and we'll have to import it and so on and so forth. But for right now, getters, setters. Well, this is Joseph, and uh, stay tuned for the next tutorial, which will be on uh, extending this class and eventually plugging it into uh, Qt, uh, or I'm sorry, QML. Um, have a good day, and uh, be nice to everybody out there.